Hello and assalamu alaikum students. In the last class, we uh, discussed actually a bit about various methods of production, okay, such as job production, batch production, flow production, mass customization. So in this class, we'll talk about them in detail. So we will be, okay, you can see the table on your screen and we will be reading it vertically, right? So we'll start with the main features of job production. So it's written single one of item. Now, what does it mean? It means that the items are produced one at a time to meet the requirements of the customers. Why one at a time? Because in job production items, they exactly meet the needs of the people. So you have to produce it according to the demand of the customers. So that is why one item is produced at one point of time because all items are different from one another to meet the demands of the people and people have varied needs okay so uh, so in order to suit their needs you have to produce one item at a time okay then essential requirements of job production is highly skilled workforce yes uh, you can understand that because now because every item is different from the other and every single customer is coming up with a different requirement and for that you require highly skilled workforce so that they can produce the item or can provide the service exactly according to the demand of the customers to gain customer loyalty and greater customer satisfaction as well. Uh, one of the main advantage of job production is it is able to undertake specialist jobs often with high value added. Now, value added, you know what is it? Huh? Because we did discuss that, but value, value added is directly linked with customer satisfaction. So obviously when customers, they get the goods which can exactly meet what they want or the, the need or want they, they have. So obviously they have greater customer satisfaction by consuming that product as well. And that is why greater value is added in case of job production because it is produced exactly what people want or what customer wants. One of the main drawback of job production is high production cost and it is time consuming as well. Why high production cost is there? Because job production is labor intensive, I told you earlier. So labor is expensive and you have to pay them salaries and wages every month, okay? And uh, apart from being costly, it is time consuming as well because if your production is labor intensive, it will take more time because labor requires some rest time as well. You have workers, so you need to give them breaks as well. And they cannot work 24 hours a day as machines can do it. So obviously it will take more time to complete the job or to produce a certain quantity of products as well. So it is costly as well because you have to pay salaries and wages to workers regularly and it is more time consuming as well. So um, it is slow because of a greater amount of workforce um, being part of that production process. Okay, um, so if we move on to now batch production, again, main feature is each item in a batch of identical products passes through each stage of production. I told you earlier that within the batch, batch means group. So within that group, all items are exactly the same and we call them identical. Okay, but outside that group or batch, items are different, right? So this is the way um, it is done. Uh, as far as batch production is concerned, right? Uh, and all items who are in the same batch, they move together, I told you earlier as well, from one stage to another. So it's not about that you are actually working on one item and you are sending it to the other uh, um, uh, production stage. No, it's not uh, the case. You actually perform the same task on all the items in that batch, and then you move the whole batch to the next stage. Okay, the essential requirement of uh, batch production is labor and machines must be able to switch to making batches of other designs, yes. So here, yes, maybe a greater use of machines is, is, is there uh, compared to job production, okay? But uh, there is significant amount of labor involved in that as well. So both machines and workers, they must be able to perform different tasks or they must be able to produce a variety of products huh? so that they can easily switch from one batch to another. For example, if cakes are being uh, 
um, produced in batches. And let's say one is there is a dry cake first, and then there is an ice cream cake, for example. So obviously, machines and workers they must be able to produce both types of products with the same amount of perfection. Okay. So for that, the machine might be expensive as well, but it must be able to do it. Same is the case with workers as well that they must be able to produce. Different kind of products in different batches as well. So that is the requirement. Otherwise, if machine is programmed or whatever machine is being used, it can only produce one type of item. Or if the workers who are involved, they are skilled only in one type of product. So obviously, um, bad production cannot be done because then only one type of product will be produced. Huh? So, but bad production means that you are able to produce a variety of products, okay, by using different batches. and that is only possible if if relevant machines and labor is uh, there okay then one of the main advantage is some benefits from economies of scale yes why because batch production can take advantage of larger scale of production compared to job production in job production scale of production is quite small because workers are involved and you cannot actually increase the scale of production to a, to the maximum level because then it will become very difficult to handle um but in batch production because some some um, type of machine is used i mean or to some extent so you can increase the scale of production and can gain uh, the advantages of economies of scale i told you earlier what is it and i actually gave you a very simple example of economy of scale why i'm not explaining it in detail because we will discuss that in the same chapter in the coming uh, topics so when you buy in bulk you get discount from the supplier so this is how you are able to reduce your cost of raw material or cost of production as well but this is not the case in job production why because in job production you wait for customer requirement and then you start producing that item and because there one item is produced at a time so you cannot buy in bulk as far as the raw material is concerned so that advantage of uh, bulk buying is not available in job production but it is available to some extent to batch production and that is what we call economies of scale the business is able to reduce its average cost and when average cost the another name given to average cost is unit cost so when there will be lower unit cost obviously business will be able to have higher profit as well so Uh, so faster and lower unit cost than job production i told you why it is uh, it will be having lower unit cost and why it is faster because now they are able to make use of the machine okay where as in job production very little use of machines are there uh, is there right uh, think about uh, a barber okay a hair dresser so obviously very little use of machine machine is there so that's why majority of the work is done by uh um, people or the humans which are involved in that so labor in that case is involved there um in the in, in providing the service okay then we have uh, one of the drawback which is their high levels of stocks in the form of unfinished goods at each stage yes that is right because in batch production because you produce in uh, a greater quantity compared to job production so you produce it and then uh, you wait for the customers to come and buy it right so it means till that time you have to store it somewhere okay and maybe you have to hire a warehouse as well you have to pay the rent of that building as well where you are actually stocking up your goods whereas in job production it's not the case because you actually produce an item um according to the requirement of the customer and you give the deadline to the customer as well so as soon as that deadline arrives the customer comes to get it and you deliver the goods to the customer so there is no extra stock which is available um or the business has to um store it somewhere so warehouse cost is not there in case of job production but in batch production yes uh, it is there and that is a disadvantage okay now if we move on to flow production as you can see flow production means it is a continuous process and because um it is a capital intensive production and machines are used heavily over there that's why goods are produced in a flow flow means in a continuous process so machines keep on producing those items right and they are produced in a very large quantity and it normally happens when you feel that there is a steady demand in the market of those products think about grocery items so grocery items are bought on daily basis by people so you know that 
there is a steady demand there or fairly large demand there and it is not going to uh, uh, finish uh, so you produce um, products in flow production so it is large scale production of identical products yes that is an advantage as well or one of the main feature of flow production as well because there is a continuous process and in that process all items they are exactly the same why because items are handled by machines and there is very less margin of mistake uh, there in flow production because let's say if one machine um, breaks down obviously it will affect the whole production process so it is a disadvantage as well but because machines are there they do not make mistakes as uh, humans uh, do so that's why the as far as the standard of the products are concerned or the quality is concerned it is uh, exactly the same so that is why we call them identical identical in terms of uh, uh, their shape design color um, quality taste if it is a neatable item so they are exactly the same now essential requirement is specialized expensive but efficient capital equipment yes so you require specialized machine why i am saying specialized because they will be expert in performing one type of task and you do not need to change your production when you are using capital intensive so that's why you will make use of those specialized machines who actually are very efficient in doing the same job again and again so when they are specialized they are efficient as well now efficient means that mistakes are less likely to happen because machines are there they are specialized and secondly they will be more productive as well so more production can take place and you know that because if everything is done by machines so machines can work 24 hours a day and they do not require any rest time as well okay then high steady demand for identical products yes there is a high demand and it is steady as well steady means that there is not much fluctuation in demand because if demand is going up or down obviously there will be a problem because then you will not be able to produce in larger quantity and if you are not producing in larger quantity what is the point of uh, uh, buying such such an expensive and specialized equipment okay because you are not using them to their to their potential so that's why you need to be very very careful whether the demand of the product is uh, steady and high at the same time as well okay and people like to buy the same product uh, again and again okay so then in that case think about bread eggs vegetables okay we can't we cannot talk about vegetables because obviously it won't be capital intensive but yes if i talk about even eggs uh, cannot uh, come in this category but if i talk about bread bakery items so they are more or less bought by all the people and um, they buy it from any bakery huh? so there is no not much uh, uh, difference there uh, in the items of one bakery with the other as well so uh, there is a steady fairly high and steady demand as well so they can uh, be produced in flow production as well although i told you that bakery items are normally produced in batch production but it can be done in flow if you think that there is Uh, a, a plenty of demand there in that area think about cars clothes shoes so they are actually produced in flow production because clothes always have a demand shoes always have a demand think about cars as well so like once a company launches a model of the car so that model stays there for the whole year or maybe a couple of years or even more than that so that's why the company they keep on uh, manufacturing the same model of the car um again and again or throughout the year so then obviously flow production is very really handy in that case one of the advantage of flow production is low unit cost as a result of economies of scale yes you understand and there is a high level of economy of scale which can be achieved because you produce in massive quantity and we call it mass production right so you buy in very large quantity as well and that's why when you buy in large quantity you get a huge discount from the from the supplier okay and that discount is actually greater than which you get in batch production because in batch production you do not buy in that much quantity yes greater than job production but lower than flow production so in flow production you actually buy maximum amount of the raw material or the goods so you get a huge discount from the supplier and you are able to reduce your average cost or lower unit cost to the uh, to the maximum level okay and high productivity as well yes and it this productivity is actually Uh, uh greater than the job, the batch production because batch production in batch production you use machinery but to some extent in flow production 
everywhere machines are used okay i told you earlier uh, just like cam so robots are used and robots are controlled by computers so that's why it is a continuous process and productivity will be very high because they can work 24 hours a day and no rest time is required at all that's why productivity uh, is huge okay uh, and that's why they are able to uh, reduce their average cost as well now drawback is inflexible often very difficult if not possible to produce a different product yes because you now have a setup where you can produce the same item again and again now if you want to change the production um like you want to produce a different kind of a product there is a problem problem is that now those machine they are specialized they can only perform one task time and again so now if you want to do it it will be either not possible or it will be very expensive because you may have to hire or buy such machines um which are flexible enough like you can detach one part of the machine and you can attach another part but that will be very expensive and often uh, the case that you might not be able to do it that is why the word inflexible is there it means you cannot produce variety of items range of products cannot be produced using flow production okay so that is one of the disadvantage and especially when people want a different item uh, of their choice so flow production might not be a suitable uh, production method to be used then mass customization i told you it is a mixture of job production and flow production if you see the main feature flow production with many common components and processes but with some differences so the basic design remains the same i told you earlier so there are many uh, same uh, components are there but they make some changes in it so that people feel that this is the right product for them or it or it meets their requirement so okay essential requirement is many common components and flexible equipment and skill labor so here flexible equipment and skill labor is also required why because your item will be each item will be different from the other one yes basic design will be the same but there are certain changes which will make that product different from the other product and if every time you have to do it for each product so you require flexible equipment which can perform that a uh, task or which can add variety to the product uh, so that it can suit the needs of the different customers same in the case case is labor as well one if labor is having one particular skill it might not be useful for mass customization you require workers who have multiple skills so that they can keep on uh, um, adding uh, different features in the product so that it will suit the needs of the people okay low unit cost yes with ability to produce a range of different goods almost to order so there is a there is a phase here almost to order right so it's not exactly the um, like job production okay customization but still there is almost order means that still it suits the individual needs of the people as well they do consider before developing or producing that product so the uh, cost is also uh, on the lower side okay and along with that they are able to produce a range of different goods as well although you know that variety is not possible when you are producing in larger quantity as in flow production in flow production you produce in larger quantity but you are not able to produce variety right and if i talk about job production so you are able to give lot of variety to people but again larger quantity cannot be produced because you are using making you more use of labor right but in mass customization both the advantages can be obtained you can reduce your cost as well and you can give variety to your customers as well so that could be your usp if you are using this method of production although the cost will not be as low as in flow production that's right and similarly the variety will not be as much as uh, which is offered in job production but still because uh, both um, advantages are there to some extent that's why it's a very effective method of production in in this modern world okay then we have uh, the drawbacks may require expensive redesign of products to achieve suitability yes obviously yeah, that is why i told you earlier that the cost is low but not to that level as is achieved in flow production because you have to make some changes so that it will suit the needs of the people so that is actually one of the drawback of uh, mass customization as well all right so now we'll move on to factors affecting the location decision so it's very easy uh, that what are the before deciding where to locate your business either in the same city in another city or in another country as well 
what are the factors which can guide you where to locate your business is more suitable or it will lead to more success of the business or it will lead to uh, um, to towards earning more profit right so before we discuss that there are two types of factors which are considered by locating or sorry while making a decision about the location of the business and those are called quantitative and qualitative factors okay we'll discuss both of them but before that we'll talk about a very relevant term with that and that is optimal location what is an opti optimal location let's have a look the location which gives the best combination of quantitative and qualitative factors to ensure long term profits for the business so it's quite easy because whenever wherever you are locating your business the main idea or the objective is to have success for the long term and to earn profit because profit is one of the primary objective of every business so you consider uh, that what would be the best combination of quantitative and qualitative factors now quantitative factors which you can which are actually in number in quantity you can measure them okay and qualitative means which are based on your judgment this is your opinion and they cannot be measured so you can judge them by the opinion of some other person who is who is having sound knowledge about that uh, city country or that area we'll talk about them okay let's talk about quantitative factors first so one is site cost again you can see that we can measure the site cost okay so we can see that whether site cost is too expensive either it is within the budget of the business or not whether the business is able to afford that site cost because let's say if you uh, locate your business in city center right now it means that uh, the the rent of that shop quite, might be quite high and you might not be able to afford uh, that much uh, that higher cost okay because rent is a fixed cost and you have to pay it on a monthly basis or if you are buying that building or that shop again it might require a large amount of money because it might be expensive so you have to consider that whether you have that amount of budget uh, that you can uh, go for that site or not if not then obviously you 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 will not only consider that it is in the city center and lots of people will, will visit it because before uh, um, uh, people start buying it you have to first start running your business and to run your business you have to spend a lot of money and if you do not have it how can you do it so this is one of the factor and side cost because it is in terms of quantity it is in number you can measure it so that's why it's called quantitative factor then regional incentives yes what are the incentives which are there in that region like for example if in that region the taxes are on the lower side okay maybe the labor which is available uh, um, again it's very cheap okay so if in that or maybe think about the raw material availability is very closer to that area where you are where you are trying to locate your factory for example so transportation cost will also be saved so you need to understand that what are the incentives there in terms of quantity right it's not only about in terms of quality because uh, we'll talk about yes it is an important factor but we'll talk about in qualitative factors so again you know that wage cost sometimes is a huge cost especially if you are going for labor intensive production uh, so you need to see that as well similarly if it is capital intensive production still you need to see that say that uh, see that sorry uh, that whether machines are expensive to buy or cheaper to buy so then you can uh, um, go for it and sometimes the government supports certain businesses and they give them some tax relief that you do not have to pay huge amount of taxes or sometimes government provides you the subsidy as well that is the amount of money which is given by the government to businesses so that they can set up their business so again it is in terms of quantity these are regional incentives so you need to consider that as well then uh, okay i can give you one example like for example you locate your business in a village so you might not get a lot of customers but because there are lots of regional incentives labor will be cheap there government might be supporting you uh, tax might be on the lower side there will be lower rent of the building as well so there are lots of benefits there and you might like to locate your business there as well and then you can send your goods to other areas where your potential customers live right uh, so it might be suitable for you uh, in that case 
okay then transport cost again because i covered that in visual incentives but you can um, take it as a separate point as well because if you consider transport cost as a separate point then you won't you won't explain that in regional incentives okay do remember that so you understand it as well it should not be very far away from the area where your business is because then buying of the raw material or uh, maybe transporting goods to the customers if uh, you have to deliver it to their doorstep so it will, will be very expensive and you won't be uh, getting enough profit for the business then labor cost again it is covered in regional incentives but you can take it another as a, if you want to take it as a separate point then do not cover it in regional incentives okay in regional incentives you can talk about government taxes and subsidies uh, there right okay or maybe the rent of the building as well you can consider that as well so labor is cheap obviously it will reduce your wage cost and it will increase your profit as well uh, revenue generation yes this is also very important that whether there are um, potential customers reside there or not like you think that the site cost is cheap transport cost is very low labor is cheap there but there are not enough customers over there and you might have to transport it far away from the area where you locate so it will increase your cost significantly okay or if you sell it over there so there are not enough customers uh, um, there so that you cannot be generating enough amount of revenue from there okay so you need to consider that as well that there should be enough customers there uh, let me give you an example let's say if uh, a lamborghini they set up their plant over here in pakistan how many people can buy lamborghini very few you know so obviously it might not be suitable to set up a plant over here because maybe labor might be cheap government might be supportive let's say uh, rent might not be that much high but problem is that not enough customers are there so revenue generation will not be there and that is actually the end point because which may result into higher profits as well okay now we'll move on to qualitative factors now we will not talk about numbers okay because numbers is all about quantitative factors okay they are important but apart from that this is also important one infrastructure whether the required amount of infrastructure is there infrastructure means transportation and communication whether uh, proper roads are built over there will there be any problem in transporting goods from one place to another okay proper communication system is there like facility of internet telephone is it available there or not because if it is not there how will you be able to communicate with your bank supplier customer even workers there will be a problem there similarly if proper road network is not there then it will be very difficult for you to transport goods and goods may get damaged as well while being transported from one area to another right and there will be a long delay because the roads are rough and you cannot deliver the goods timely or you cannot receive the goods timely and for that type of time period your production will stop so obviously uh this is not good for the business at all because they won't be able to meet the deadlines given to the customer resulting in bad image right okay then we have environmental and planning consideration again because if you think that you are actually locating uh in an area which is suitable to you okay uh, in terms of uh, uh, quantitative factors but um uh, it is against uh, uh, the benefit or the welfare of the people living by nearby right so then government can take uh, come into play and they can take action to control your activity okay so if you do not consider that and uh, you keep on expanding the time will come then a pressure group will be formed and they will start protesting uh, or uh, um, arranging box against your business so you need to be very very careful that you set up your business in an area where you can expand easily if you want to increase your scale of production because if it is not possible in the future right now you might start with a small business and nobody is observing you but as soon as you get big then it comes uh, um, in the eyes of everybody why because now the damage is immense earlier you were not polluting the environment to that extent that people may start start observing you observing you but now maybe the media will come into play as well they may show a live coverage of uh, your factory or your business polluting the environment in the form of land pollution air pollution water pollution right or maybe there is now a lot of traffic congestion as well earlier that was wasn't there but now because you have increased your scale of production so now a lot of traffic is there because loading and unloading is there the whole day 
So the people who are living in the near vicinity, they are actually um, being affected. So then obviously, uh, um, uh, pressure groups will, can be formed. Pressure groups are actually the groups of people who actually try to influence businesses so that they won't do or involve in such activities which actually affect the health of the people nearby or in the surrounding. So obviously it may lead to uh, government taking an action as well. Then maybe higher taxes can be imposed or maybe an, a penalty can be imposed on the business as well. So resulting in very bad image. Okay, then management preferences. Yes, sometimes you think that as a manager or let's say you are the owner and the manager as well and you think that uh, uh, setting up a business very far away won't be suitable because we, you have to travel very far away on regular basis or on daily basis. You're, you have a family in one city, okay, and you do not want to set up your business far away from them, okay, to give them the protection so that you every day you can meet your family and you can stay with them. So if this is a preference of the management, then they would like to uh, locate their business in an area which is in the near vicinity where they live, okay? Then maybe other factors might not be that much important because obviously uh, the business might uh, earn lower profits, but, but preference of the management is not to earn very high profit. Even a smaller amount of profit will be sufficient for the managers or owners because they feel that maybe cl uh, living closer to the family or let's say uh, workplace being closer to the family is, as, uh, is more critical rather than getting higher profit. So this can also be one of the factors. And um, more than that, uh, sometimes the manager, they, they do have their social life as well. They uh, need to have a get together. They have family parties. Uh, they have some family uh, friend circles as well. They, they meet their friends on a regular basis. So if their factory or their business is far away from uh, um, the, that area, or the, let's say it is in another city, so obviously then you cannot have your social life. So um, this could also be one of the reasons that they prefer that the location should be closer to the area where they live. Okay, then clustering, yes. This is again very important. Cluster means a group. So we would like to set up your business where your rival businesses uh, um, locate their business. Huh? Because you know that lot of similar type of customers will come over there and they may like to visit your shop as well. Or your, uh, um, they might like to uh, buy your products as well. Now think about, like when I, McDonald's and KFC, so they, actually locate nearby, okay, Bata and service, you always see that they are closer to uh, each other. The reason is because people who like to buy Bata, they may like to buy service as well because price is almost in the same range and the quality is also the same. So uh, that is why if you would like to, uh, sorry, if you set up your business in an area where your competitors are there and you feel that you have the same quality. So it will be a lot better because there are more chances customers visiting your uh, shop or buying your product, okay? Because if you set up your, for example, if it is a shop, uh, let's say it's a cell phone shop and you set up in uh, in a in an isolated area, okay? So you, and where, where there is no other shop. So people may, some people may come to you and they will only buy from your shop, but not a lot of customers will come over there. Why? Because variety is not there. So they would like to go to, let's say, in Lahore, Hafiz Center. Why? Because in a free center, there are lots of shops, lots of varieties, price ranges as well. So people may like to visit uh, those um, areas, right? So it is better to have your mobile shop in Hafiz center because now the chances of customer visiting your shop will increase, okay? And now, yes, it's up to you how you deal your, deal your clients. That is a different story, but they will definitely visit your shop because that is actually the hub um, of uh, um, mobile customers, okay? And they do visit uh, that area as well. So this is, this could also be one of the factors. All right, um, okay, now factors affecting international location, I'll uh, talk about it in the next lesson. So thank you very much, that's all.